If you ever thought about pouring your own silver and wondering what type of tools, equipment, and products are required, this might be a helpful video for you. I will introduce you to the Silver Torch 66 pouring bench and all the components that I use to create my silver products. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around and check it out. If you enjoy this content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. There has been a growing interest in poured silver products within our community and even a growing interest for individuals to learn to pour their own. Pouring silver products for me serves as an opportunity to express and share my creativity. I really enjoy the process of taking a raw material and transforming it into a piece of art that also serves as a store of wealth. In my eyes, it's a win-win. Then on top of that, seeing that others want to own a piece of my work is very humbling and gratifying. This video will walk you through the Silver Torch 66 pouring bench to show you the equipment, tools, and supplies I use to make silver products. I won't get into too much detail because there's so much to show, and I won't be talking about how to pour in this video but I will do follow-on videos displaying, explaining, and demonstrating this equipment and how I pour later. First, the bench itself. The frame is made of steel angle iron with plywood shelving. Because of the nature of the molten metals involved with this process, the top shelf is covered with landscape bricks. This is to provide a safety barrier between any accidental spills and the rest of my tools and equipment. I have also added high temperature fire rated bricks, which the actual pouring and torch heating of molds is to be done. I further use these fire rated bricks to create a semi-enclosed oven-like area to increase the retention of heat when melting silver using small ceramic crucibles or warming up molds. I placed a plywood backing to the bench to prevent any splatter from leaving the bench area. A cinder block turned out to create a great elevated shelf for my graphite molds and provide a safe and convenient place to keep the map gas bottle. A pegboard was added to the back of the table for conveniently hanging up tools that need to be at hand. Next is the safety gear. I have a welding apron that extends below my knees to protect me from any spills or splatter. A good set of welding gloves that offer good dexterity and the ability to hold tools while I work. I always wear eye protection and you should always wear thick heat resistant clothing that covers any exposed skin. Denim jean or like material works very well for this. Then it's vitally important to have a serviceable fire extinguisher very close by. You will also want to make sure there are no flammable or heat sensitive materials around your bench. Anything with a low flash point could ignite and produce a fire. Now let's move on to the equipment. I have an electric furnace with a 3 kilogram crucible. It has a 2100 watt power input a max heating temperature of 1150 degrees Celsius. It has a PID module that measures and controls the heating of the furnace, making it very easy for me to make sure the silver is always at the right temperature for pouring. I also use MAP gas torches. I choose to use a hose torch to attach to the MAP gas bottle so that I can keep the bottle out of the way and in the upright position where the gas will properly feed into the hose when it starts to become empty. I chose to use a two torch system because I found that one just doesn't seem to hold the silver's temperature high enough above its melting point to allow for smooth pouring. Any torch would suffice, but I use the burns o TS-8000 and I find it to be a top quality torch. When melting small pieces or pulling impurities out of silver, I generally use a ceramic crucible. I have different sizes and will explain why and how to season them properly in follow-on videos. 
There are some very specific tools you will need for this type of work. One is crucible tongs that are made for the type of crucible that you have in your furnace. When using these smaller ceramic type crucibles, you will need whip handles. I use a pair of long needle nose pliers for safely placing silver into my furnace crucible. I don't want to just drop it into an empty hot crucible because they're fragile and they can break. If they are partially full and I drop a large piece into it, it may cause a splatter of molten metal, which is never a good thing. I use the same pliers for handling the hot pieces that come out of the mold. A quenching bucket is necessary to cool your projects down once removed from the mold. You will need molds. There are many options here and I won't even try to cover them in this video. Here I have some simple graphite molds. You'll need pliers for picking up and moving around the very hot molds and cutting tools for removing the sprue and any flashing that the poured piece may have. Keeping the bench clean and uncluttered is not only a good safety practice but also prevents any contaminations of foreign materials in your products. Brushes, shop vacs, or just a damp cloth may be all that you need to keep things tidy and clean around the pouring bench. Once a piece is poured, the real work begins. Depending on your personal preference and style will dictate how much work goes into creating a finished product. For me, the next step is placing the newly poured and cooled pieces into a rock tumbler. There are many different brands and sizes out there, but I chose the Loratone Model 3A. I'll discuss my reasons for this choice in a future video. Inside the tumbler is two pounds of 1 8 inch stainless steel tumbling media shot jewelers mix. I also include a solution of Shine Bright Burnishing Compound in water. Once the piece is adequately tumbled, it goes onto the grinder for any major flashing or leftover sprue removal. I use an M2 mini bench grinder that has an 8mm diameter shaft with variable speed up to 8,500 revolutions per minute. It has accessories for mounting attachments on both spindles and a mandrel attachment. I use them both. This tool is great for cutting, grinding, buffing, and polishing. I have fashioned a drill press vise to hold the mandrel securely for working the details. Because grinding and polishing creates heat, it can make the piece being worked on extremely hot. So I have finger cots that help absorb the heat and protect my fingers. I also sometimes use a wooden ring clamp to help me hold smaller pieces.
When it comes to rotary tools, there are an infinite number of accessories that can be used. Some are made of different degrees of abrasive materials and don't require compounds. Or, cloth, buffing, and polishing wheels can be used in conjunction with specific cutting, buffing, and polishing compounds made specifically for the metals that you're working with. I choose to use Dialux brand compounds when buffing and polishing my pieces. In between the buffing and polishing process, a piece must be thoroughly cleaned of any residual buffing compound before using the finer polishing compounds. Some pieces require the use of my mini table belt sander. This tool gives me very specific abilities when working with my silver pieces. It has seven variable speeds and the ability to change out different grits of belts with very little effort. I mount it to my drill press vise for stability. Once all the work involving the removal of silver is complete, I weigh each piece with a calibrated scale. Then the stamping on the bottom of the piece can be done. The weight in troy ounces, the year of creation, my channel signature eight-pointed cross, a serial number if required, and a fineness hallmark is added to each piece. Then it's time for the stamping on the top. I've chosen to use this stamping technique to give my pieces originality. Each design is cataloged and a serial number provided. I'm always working on new designs and acquiring new stamps to expand my creative options. I use a 4 inch by 4 inch metal stamping block on top of a hard rubber 4x4 block to absorb impact. I have a sturdy two pound hammer I use to inset the stamp design. I use aluminum plumber's tape to create new designs and to quickly test that the stamp is positioned correctly before stamping. Once I'm satisfied with the stamping, I may choose to blacken the piece to highlight the stamping, then give the piece a final mechanical polish. Finally, I conduct a detailed quality control inspection do a final hand polishing, create a certificate of authenticity, and bag the piece for protection, and then place it into a presentation pouch. Now that you're familiar with the Silver Torch 66 Bench, I'll be creating more videos that will go into more details about why I chose these tools, how I use them, and the creative process behind my work. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who watch the entire video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. If you're interested in purchasing any of these poured products, stop by my website at www.silvertorch66.com select the silver for sale button that will take you to the product page. Please make sure that you include the item ID number with your request. Thank you.